why do we need regulators? Well, in those industries that were called the utility industries, we're talking about electricity, telecommunications, water, gas, um, the railways. But when these when these industries were privatised, there was a danger that uh, the new privatised company would have a different objective um, than uh, the state-owned company. It would be going for profit, and there was a danger of exploitation because it's very unlikely that these industries would have any uh, competition. Uh, the new privatised company would have much competition. These were natural monopolies in many cases, and uh, a natural monopoly with inexhaustible economies of scale very non-contestable the market so so the regulator is there to to simulate competition uh, competition which 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 is highly unlikely in some cases the regulator has been able to create competition but uh, on the whole it's been very difficult for regulators to do that and so they in the UK anyway they use price capping to 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 simulate Price capping in the UK uh, uses the RPI minus X formula. Well, RPI is the retail price index, it's one of the measurements of inflation, it's the inflation rate, the speed at which the general price level is rising. And X represents the improvements in efficiency, the reductions in costs the regulator believes the industry can achieve. And so by saying to the industry, you can only put your prices up by RPI minus X, they're saying to the industry, you must cut your real price by the size X. You can only put your price up by X less than inflation. That's a real price cut. So for instance, if RPI is 5 and X is set at 2, the regulator says you can only set your, you can only raise your nominal price, the number price, by 3%. Even though all prices are going up by 5%, that's a 2% real price cut. And the regulator knows that driven by profits, the profit motive, the regulated industry will do its best to achieve those efficiency gains because it wants to maintain its profit level. It can only maintain its profit level if it does cut costs to the size of X. Now, if it cuts costs beyond X, it's allowed to keep the extra profit. So this is an incentive for the firm to get efficient, when if it wasn't regulated, it might just become lazy and put its price up to cover its laziness. So RPI minus X, a price capping system, aiming to, to force efficiency gains onto um, a privatised natural monopoly, greedy for profits. Sometimes uh, the regulator will allow the, the privatised firm to put up its real price. It, it uses a, a variation on RPI minus X. It uses RPI plus K, where K is the permitted real price rise allowed by the regulator. It's happened in the water industry, where the water regulator, Ofwat, has recognised the need for water firms to put up their price um, in real terms to cover the cost of of, of capital investment in the industry. So RPI plus K really works in the same way as RPI minus X. It's, it's a system of price capping. Well, although the regulator is, 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 is using price capping, um, they also try and create competition where possible. And a good example of this is in the rail industry. Um, when, when, when British Rail existed, uh, in, before it was privatised, when the state owned British Rail, it was entirely vertically integrated. It was uh, everything from the, uh, uh, the, the organisation of the infrastructure, the tracks, the, looking after the tunnels, the, the bridges, the, the stations, right up to the food on the trains, uh, which was a common joke, uh, British Rail pork pies. Um, every, every aspect of the rail industry was owned by the, was owned by the government. When it was privatised, uh, it was seen that it would be very difficult for a new entrant to come in and compete with the new privatised rail industry. But the regulators were able to create some competition by isolating the element of the rail industry that made it so non-contestable, and that's the infrastructure. No second train company was going to come along and build thousands and thousands of kilometres of track, and stations and bridges, and cuttings, and embankments, and tunnels. So, so the regulator created um, 
rail track, which which is the owner of the which was the owner of the of the infrastructure, and and allowed other companies, train operating companies, to run their trains on rail tracks infrastructure, and that made the market more contestable because it became affordable to run trains when you didn't have to provide your own track, you just paid a fee to rail track for the permission to run trains on their track. Now rail track since, uh, has since evolved into network rail, but there are 25 train operating companies competing and paying a fee, and the, the fee that they pay is the, the, the price that is price capped. So network rail now own the infrastructure, they charge the train operating companies for running trains, and that's the price that the regulator price caps. And then the paying public pay a fare Well, in the States they use a profit capping system, not a price capping system. Uh, the profit capping system says that privatized uh, regulated industries there have a set amount of profit they're allowed to earn, and beyond that they, they're not allowed to keep any profits. And the amount of profit they're allowed to earn is decided according to how much capital they own. But uh, critics of this system have said that that encourages firms to over-invest in capital, to be allowed to, to, get, to have the right to, uh, to keep more of their profit. Setting a value of X is of course extremely difficult. The regulator needs to know the cost structure of the privatized industry. And the, 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 the cost structure is really only available from one, from one source, and that's the, the industry they're regulating. So this, this creates a difficulty, uh, and, and they may get fed information by the uh, firm, because the firm has a vested interest in having X set as low as possible. So knowing how to set X is difficult for the regulator. A second problem is for how long should X be set? X is currently set for five years. So every year the firm can only raise its price by RPI minus X. But that X is set for five years. And some critics might say this is too long. If X is shown to be easily obtained, if it's easy for the privatized industry to cut its costs by X, perhaps X should have been higher. And if X is set too frequently, uh, let's say X was being set every six months by the regulator, well that's not much good either because it's very difficult for the, unfairly difficult for the, for the firm to, uh, to, to be able to plan ahead and uh, knowing what, what, price, what price rises they're going to be allowed to implement. A third problem is the problem of regulatory capture. Regulatory capture is when uh, the, the, the industry regulator is more sympathetic to the industry than to the general public. You see, the question arises, who should be the regulator? It has to be an industry expert, and perhaps the industry expert is best found as an as a ex-senior employee of the industry. Um, but uh, there's a danger there of regulatory capture because they may be more sympathetic to, the, to, their, to their old employer uh, than, than, than the general public whom they're meant to be, um, whom they're meant to be serving.